The Miami Heat are the first team to punch their ticket to the conference finals, eliminating the Philadelphia 76ers in Philadelphia in six games. Uh, and that really, really puts the 76ers in a tough spot. Um, it's It's been kind of an up-and-down season all year. Embiid had a had an MVP-level season, uh, despite getting nothing from Ben Simmons up until the trade deadline when they turned him into James Harden. And James Harden had a great first week, and then it's kind of just been chasing that high ever since. And it just never happened in his entire 76ers tenure, which was half a season and, and two rounds of the playoffs. He never took more than than 20 shots. Never went over 20 shots. And here in Do or Die Game 6 in Philadelphia, he nine shots. Two shots in the second half. Both were misses. And it just it puts the 76ers in such an odd place. This is going to be such an interesting year for the, or off season for them because Daryl Morey is going to have some hard decisions to make. They gave up a lot to get James Harden. Like yes, Ben Simmons wasn't playing, but he was also like a 25 year old still under contract for four years, as well as Seth Curry, DeAndre Jordan. Like the 76ers gave up a lot of depth to go get James Harden to help put them over the top. It was Daryl Morey getting his guy. It was Joel Embiid having an MVP season that the team didn't want to waste. It all made sense in the moment. I just think people didn't realize that Harden was at where he's at. He came in to the Nets season um, out of shape. He wasn't playing very hard. It seemed like he was sandbagging to get his way out of out of town. And it worked. He gets to Philly. And then it was kind of just an old habits die hard kind of a, kind of a thing. And... Not for nothing, uh, he does have a player option for next year, which is $47 million. So I'm guessing he's going to opt into that, which then puts Daryl Morey in a weird spot because it's going to be sign him to a max extension or let him walk and have traded everything for a year and a half or so of James Harden, who was past his prime. And Embiid even said as much in his post-game interviews tonight where he said, you know, we thought we were getting the James Harden from Houston, and he's clearly not that guy anymore. And that's wild if he's already saying that. Um, it makes me really curious to see, like, what's going to happen and which which direction this franchise is going to go. Because, like, you can't get rid of Embiid. If it's Embiid or Harden, you cannot get rid of Joel Embiid if you're the 76ers. Philadelphia will go to Daryl Morey's house and, and burn it down if he tries to trade Joel Embiid and sides with his dude James Harden. And the extension that is is or isn't going to be offered is going to be looming over this entire offseason and next year until, until it's either signed or it comes out that he's not getting offered it because it's going to be probably close to $240 million that they could offer. Um, and if he's already showing signs of not being the same player, not just with his scoring, but with the, just the athletic burst, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, tough one. I, I posed this question to my friend the other day. I said, what would you, who would you rather give $240 million, James Harden or Kyrie Irving? And that was like, like a fry an egg on your brain type question where it's like, it would have been no-brainers two years ago even you know before last season it would have been or before this season it would have been a no-brainer but it's tough now it's it's crazy to think about it's crazy to think that like people would be like don't give either of those guys that money because you don't know what you're getting at all and really the the big thing other than this hardened extension that's going to be looming over the 76ers is how is Daryl Morey going to rebuild this team's depth? They have a couple veteran guys that are going to be uh, coming off the books. I think Danny Green, um, who hopefully he's okay, looks like a terrible injury um, in the first quarter tonight. Uh, Joel Embiid like fell into his knee and it just looked bad. So I hope I hope he's okay. Um, yes, I've participated in many a Danny Green troll as a Lakers fan online, but. Above all else, I just I don't want to see anyone get hurt, especially like that. So hopefully he's okay, but who knows what his status with the team is going to be. They're going to have um, 
guys like George's Niang, um, Isaiah Joe, I believe, is coming off the books. Shake Milton has an option. Tyrese Maxey, the team's probably going to pick up his. Oh no, it's Shake Milton with a team option. Uh, Tyrese Maxey has another year left before it's uh, his option. So they have some young pieces. They just don't have the rest of the depth. I don't know if this is just because Doc Rivers was like committed to not playing super young players, but they're gonna have a hard time because their their cap is forty uh, percent Joel Embiid and James Harden. It was crazy to think about too. I didn't think about it until I was looking at the numbers. Is James Harden's making fourteen million dollars more than Embiid if he opts into that player option? I don't know. I don't think. Things like that, you know, factor in. But, like, Joel Embiid seemed to be a pretty petty guy. So, like, it wouldn't surprise me if he, like, starts taking shots at Harden being overpaid. Like, I just... uh, You could tell me anything tomorrow. Like, you could tell me I'm going to wake up and see any headline tomorrow. And I'm going to absolutely believe it. Because anything is possible with this team. Um, So, they have all these young players. They have these decisions they're going to have to make on guys like Danny Green and Korkmaz and... All of these role players that just kind of weren't enough this year. And the thing that I think is going to end up being what the only move really that they're going to have to make is all about trading Tobias Harris, who did not have a very good playoff run, uh, did not have a very good game six, and has generally been one of the popular scapegoats for um, for blame when it comes to this team. Um he is making $37 million, which is also $4 million more than Joel Embiid. Uh, so going to be interesting to see what happens with that. I don't think there's any world where they can just trade him for like a, another good player. I think they're definitely going to have to package him with some type of pick or maybe picks if they're not willing to do a first. Uh, if they even, I don't even think they have a first because they gave it up in the Harden trade. So... They're going to really have to put something together to offload Tobias Harris on this contract. And there's not many teams, I don't think, that are wanting to pay $37 million of Tobias Harris. Uh, Maybe the Thunder, if the picks are nice, because the Thunder will just take everyone. I think the Knicks might be interested because they just want stars. And then a team that I was thinking about that, like, I don't know what world they would do this in, but if Zach Levine walks, Tobias Harris to the Bulls. I, you know, it might be a, a conflict with DeMar, but I'm just saying. It, the thought crossed my mind, and it made some sense in the moment. Haven't really thought about it more, so, I mean, there might be holes to poke in that. Uh, and then the last last piece of this all is Doc Rivers, who has been rumored to be interested in the Lakers coaching job, which, come on. Daryl, you can't let a guy like Doc out of your building. you gotta you got to lock him down. you got to make sure tomorrow... You give him all the job security there is. He doesn't need. He doesn't need to come to the Lakers. The Lakers don't deserve Doc. Well, definitely don't. Don't let Doc go. Definitely don't. Um, after the game, he said something absolutely legendary. They asked him like if he felt like his job was in jeopardy or anything, and he said like No, I, I'm a good coach. I do a good job. Something like that. And it's just it's incredible. Like. That whole team is just such an interesting character study of of egos and minds and and sound bites. I just ugh, I cannot imagine what this off season is going to be for them if they don't offer James Harden a max like right away, or if they can't find a trade partner for Tobias Harris or veterans start you know blowing them off and signing with other teams to round out that depth. It's gonna be bad. Oh, before I, before I go too. Hats off, Jimmy Butler, Petty King. I just did a video the other day talking about how petty these playoffs have been, and Jimmy Butler eliminates the 76ers, hops on the post game, says, I wish I was still playing with Joel Embiid. I don't know why I'm not still playing with Joel Embiid. Then he's walking in to the locker room through the tunnel, and he just starts shouting, like, you chose Tobias Harris over me? <sighs> petty King. We, we love a Petty King here on Good Hoops. Um... And that's really everything. I mean, this this 76ers team has a lot of problems, um, chief of which is going to be if they're paying James Harden $240 million for two shots in the second half of an elimination playoff game. 
So it kind of feels like that's inevitable. So I, I don't want to dwell on that too much. But like Doc Rivers, his job security, and what exactly they can turn Tobias Harris into to fortify that bench depth, that's going to be the two big things to watch for the 76ers, which I know that's not the most reassuring thing to Sixers fans. Uh, if you're out there, I'm sorry. I know it's terrible. Maybe, you know, nah, nah. I was going to just start throwing out hypothetical Laker trades to send Russell Westbrook to Philly, but that's okay. Well, we'll I'll spare you that. So, if 76ers fans, please let me know your thoughts about this team, uh, where you think they might go as far as moves in the offseason. Um, if you think Tobias Harris is probably the, the answer in terms of what they can do, um, and really above all else, if you want the team to give that type of money to James Harden now after this, this playoff performance, um, please let me know in the comments. Uh, it's a safe place, Sixers fans. Weather it all out. It's okay. Um, thank you for watching, and peace.